for our next honoree, I would like to ask one of the people that inspired me the most in my stay in Austin, Louis Black. Please, if you would join us. I get to be on stage with Guillermo del Toro and Robert Rodriguez, and so what did I do to deserve this? <laughs> when Evan Smith and I first pitched the idea of the Texas Film Hall of Fame, there was a lot of skepticism as to whether there would be enough people, Texas films and Texans and people with Texas relations to honor. And so we came back with a seven or eight page single space list. Tonight is, is easy, that list was easy, honoring the people who have accomplished, the people who have gone out and made movies, the movies that were made, that's easy. What's really hard is seeing talent in kids and in young filmmakers who nobody else is supporting. It's seeing a 15-year-old kid who wants to be an actor knowing that that guy is gonna be an actor and helping him get a career. It's meeting 18 to 22-year-olds who wanna write and in a very laconic way saying, come on, let, let's talk, we'll make a movie. It's, it's going over to your friend's house for dinner one night where there are two brothers and a friend of theirs who've made five minutes of a short film, Bottle Rocket, and being smart enough to say, I'm gonna get this short made and then go to Hollywood to get the millions to make a feature film. It's running into a filmmaker in Mexico at a small Sundance Institute and saying to Guillermo del Toro, come, come with me, let me introduce you to people. You are going to be, a, you are a great filmmaker. Let me show you around. We are here tonight because of L.M. Kit Carson. There are so many remarkable things you can say about Kit. Kit helped launch independent film when with his friend Jim McBride in 1967, they made David Holzman's Diary. When, when he couldn't get the film shown in the New York Film Festival, so they were only showing foreign films, he created the USA Film Festival in Dallas. He helped, he worked with our friends Toby Hooper to make Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, and with Wim Vendors to make Paris, Texas. He discovered the Wilson Brothers and Wes Anderson and got Bottle Rocket made. But all of those don't really get to the importance of Carson. Again and again and again, Kit, and Kit was an outlaw. He used to have, he had one of those dusters out of a Sergio Leone movie and a shock of hair that he was insanely proud of and justfully so. And he had a look in his eyes that he always knew what was going on a little bit more than you do. He had that faraway look of a gambler who was always looking for the next game. But Kit again and again and again popped up in remarkable places making remarkable things happen. To honor Kit Carson is the whole idea behind driving this, creating this event, having this event happen, culminates with the privilege of getting to honor L.M. Kit Carson. Uh, I, I think if you, if you go to Google and you Google Kit Carson, you'll come up with two outlaws. One in the past and then <laughs> Louis Minor Kit Carson, who who was fundamental for uh, many of us, certainly for me, uh, and who created so many things. He, he was, for me, uh, a major figure that never quite was in the center of the spotlight. He was like Zelig, the Woody Allen character, always in the important pictures, but always on the side. But he was never on the side when it came to promoting and creating new talent and helping it exist. He was never a follower. He was always a leader. He was never um, behind the bandwagon. He was pulling it. Uh, he saw things that nobody else saw, and in that, he's a true visionary. And uh, we are here to honor him with a, few, uh, with a look at his work. We are rolling. Owen Wilson and I met Kid 20 years ago. He was the only person we had ever met who actually worked in the movie business. 
and we had never come across someone who would so automatically turn any idea or experience or or suggestion into the into the form of a story noted french wit john luc godard said uh, what is film film is truth 24 times a second so I thought that if I put it all down on film and I run it back and forth and I put my thumb on it and I stop it when I want to, then I got everything. I got it all. I should get it all. I should get it all. I should get the meaning. I should understand it. So this is what this is going to be. Uh, this is, this, I'm going to make a diary. Like, uh, the famous Lulu's diary. Uh, my diary. Kid had a sort of rustic glamour, like a cowboy screenwriter. He never told us much about his childhood, except that the L was for Lewis and the M was for Minor, two old men he was named after. We loved Kit in David Holtzman's diary, which we saw with him uh, in Dallas. And we had already loved his work in Breathless and his work on the script of Paris, Texas. He gave us a one-on-one -on -one tutorial in script writing and uh, short film editing, and also a lesson in how to how to hustle a, a project into into its existence. Cynthia said to us that of all the people who were lucky to have known Kit, and there were a lot, uh, we were the luckiest, and it certainly felt that way to us and uh, still does. Thank you. Grandma was slow when she was old. Hey, go! You ever kiss a pig? <laughs> What I'm trying to do is say, you're not alone. And I think that's important for people to know. Accepting on behalf of L.M. Kit Carson is Carson's longtime partner, Cynthia Hargrave. When Kit was five, while visiting with his family up in the Panhandle, they all went to the movies. And what they saw was It's a Wonderful Life. At the end of the movie, he cried. And it earned him a ride home on the shoulders of his uncle. Um, a detail that was always part of the story when he told it, because Kit really liked small details. Life details. What no one really could have known at that point is that for this unique Dallas five-year-old, a life-defining event had happened. It not only began his lifelong love affair with movies in general, but the themes of this movie story would come to define him. He grew to believe that people were important. not money, that being part of life, being involved, 
making sure that your life meant something. That was the point. And it became the way he lived. This movie-going moment formed also his personal desire to tell stories, movie stories, and that's the way Kit would have said it, movie stories. By the way, there's a hyphen between movie and stories because if you've ever read Kit's work, you know that there was not a good sentence in life that did not have a unusually placed hyphen between two unlikely words. Sharing became a focal point of his life and his never ending willingness to share and help anyone from a young filmmaker in Guadalajara to kids in Africa or two 20-somethings in Dallas who just wanted to make their movie. His sharing became legendary. Yeah, yeah, it's here somewhere. He shared with so many people, but after he shared, he changed their lives. They're here on the stage, they're in this room, they're across the world. I do believe that what is essential about a person does not die, it clarifies. And the highest tribute we can give is not grief, but gratitude. And I stand here, not unlike George Bailey, overwhelmed at the continuing outpouring of gratitude and appreciation for Kit and his work. And I'd like to thank pretty much everyone for that. I'd also like to give a heartfelt thank to, thanks to Rebecca Campbell and, and Rick Linkletter and the Austin Film Society for this honor. You need to know how happy and pleased he would have been. A very special thank you to Lewis Black, wherever he was, for all of his passion and generosity in this, to Wes Anderson for his continuing contributions and to Guillermo del Toro, who has, from the beginning, always been consistent in his love and devotion. If there's one thing I'm sure of, it's that right now, at this very moment, bells are ringing and angels are getting their wings because it really was a wonderful life. Thank you.